Hey everyone, it's Joe Waxman, and I'm back with another video. Uh, I want to go over the cancer archetype and the cancer ascendant. Um, so I already went through Gemini, the third sign. Now we're at cancer. It's the fourth sign. And um, the number four is, is very telling. So I want to talk about that first. Um, so with Gemini, we have the, the triangles, the three points. With cancer, now we have the, the square, I'm not doing it justice here, but four points. And basically, I mean, you can just think of a square and, and that, that very much uh, summarizes uh, cancer's energy. And it's not just squares. I mean, like you can make uh, like rectangles or like a diamond shapes or any four pointed, four sided shape is really representative of cancer. And um, the number four is significant because like in, in Japan, the number four represents death. And that's very telling of cancer because four, eight, and 12 are the water signs. And these are not prime numbers. They are all divisible by two. That, and that has a separating quality. You know, when we have number four, it can be divided into two and two. And then it just falls flat, right? It doesn't hold its shape anymore. It dies. Uh, it can be reborn and reassembled. But this, this um, quality of, of separating and dying is very um, points to the, the watery nature of cancer. So that's important to think about. Also, um, in the shape, um, you know, the triangle number three is very dynamic. And so it brings out like a, 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 a quality of intellectuality because of the dynamic nature of the triangle. Um, whereas square is much more solid and um, in a sense, um, what? It's, it's, it's less dynamic, you could say, than the triangle. Um, it's just square, you know, like this, don't, don't be a square. Um, and that, that's also, you know, indicative of, of Cancerian nature. Cancer is a very mature sign. It's symbolized by the mother, right? So it's no longer um, like uh, youthful in Cancer, like in Gemini, we don't have this this uh, useful dynamism, we all of a sudden we're, we're much more mature in cancer. Uh, ruled by the moon, so naturally emotions come to mind. Um, and we'll get all into that. Um, cardinal water, so it's, um, it's angular. So like Aries rules the cardinal, first cardinal sign. Um, cancer rules the um, vertical bottom cardinal sign, the IC. Uh, and it's the first water sign. So that's important to think about. Um, so the water signs go cardinal, fixed, mutable, for whatever that means. Um, when, in, if we're talking about like the yearly cycle, one of the ways to, to see cancer energy is that Gemini is on the rising side all the way to the, um, summer solstice, right? June 21st is when uh, Gemini ends and Cancer begins. So that's the height. So you could say like Gemini is about rising to the top, right to the height of the energy, of the yearly energy, the seasonal energy, um, where the longest day of the year is, is at the end of Gemini, June 21st. Then from the top, we're going down with Cancer. So Cancer has a top-down approach, looking from the top downward. And the reason this is significant is because that's essentially what the um, the mother needs to do to their with their kids. They need to be have a bird's eye view of their children, of their family in general, right? So that's the top down approach from cancer. Um, so that's significant. That's important to think about. That's the basic nature of cancer. It's very protective sign and that's the square that the you know the crab holding holding something in its grasp and its protection and we see that in the glyph with the basically the the yin yang symbol it has a very um sort of embracing quality to it uh lost my train of thought but um so yeah, crab, uh, the nighttime is, is associated with cancer because it rules the moon. 
like Leo rules the Leo is ruled by the sun, so it rules the day. Cancer is ruled by the moon, so it rules nighttime. Um, emotionality, because Cancer is the heart. Cancer is not the physical heart. Cancer is like the emotional heart, right? Um, rules the emotions. Um, love. All of a sudden, we get love. We don't really have love. We have a sensorial love with with um, with uh, Taurus, you know, Taurus develops sensory love or even romantic love because it's Venus ruled. But here we have the birth of a motherly love, so unconditional love. Yes, Cancer can be very conditionally loving when in relationship, when in romantic relationships. But the archetype of Cancer, um, as far as love is concerned, is, is uh, unconditional love towards the children. It's not a self-serving love. It's not a, I'll love you if you love me back. I'll love you if you do things for me. It's a, it's a love of the, the children that will love the children no matter what. Um, so that's, we, we call that unconditional love and it's the heart. So, um, so emotional, uh, emotionality, tears, water, you know, can, the moon rules the tide. So naturally like the tears are represented by the cancer, the feeling of emotions, intense emotionality. Um, along with that is a kind of, um, denial of rationality you get irrational emotions emotions aren't really rational they tend to be more on the irrational side of things so a lack of rationality is is often can be associated with, with cancer um there's a hidden quality to cancer especially because the moon goes from full moon to you know half moon or quarter moon whatever you want to call it to no moon right so it hides and moon is reflective as well. So it's not um, emitting its own light, it's emitting light from the sun. And that relates to the codependent, at least dependent nature of cancer. Could be codependent, but at least dependent, dependent on others, dependent on family, uh, female, dependent on a male. And that's not to say that people with heavy cancer placements can't be independent. This is just talking about the archetype of cancer, which is very feminine and dependent and relying on family, depending on others to, to complete them. Uh, that's the cancer archetype, right? Um, um, and with the crab, we have the, the, the association of the, the shell. So like a protective quality again, right? The outer shell, cancers can be very hard on the surface because they're protecting their inner vulnerability and they are vulnerable on the inside, right? And that's why they have to be hard on the outside. And if you're not on the inside, they can be very, very hard and tough. Cancers can be very tough, right? Uh, they have mature motherly quality, um, very heartfelt um, feeling to them. Cancers always feel motherly, right? You know, that you, you just feel a cancer. They just have this motherly feminine quality to them. Um, and it's nice, people like it. It's not very exciting. It's not very interesting, especially like coming from like a Gemini perspective, the way I am. Um, tends to be more on the boring side of things, but we feel love, we kill, feel cared for, we feel, you know, um, safe with, with cancer, right? Uh, unless, unless they're mad at you, right? Then you don't feel safe. You feel like they can kill you because they literally can kill you. Um, <laughs> um, I know from personal experiences, I'm sure a lot of people do, um, they have a very creative quality to them as well because the moon is creative um it rules the feminine creative side of things uh the breasts the womb pregnancy um these are all cancerian moon related things so that's a very creative quality you know the creative feminine aspect not it's different than the creative masculine aspect of the sun right or venus or neptune but it is still very creative um, the cancer also relates to early childhood development, you know, so planets in cancer or the moon or the IC fourth house will relate to early childhood development, um, creative intuitive, the moon rules intuition. So, uh, we can see intuition, you know, in, in the, within the cancer archetype, um, you know, the femininity breast, the heart, the energetic heart, uh, the period, the womb. The mind, the inner mind, it has a very strong correlation to the mind, um, cancer. And um, again, in, you know, and more of an emotional, irrational quality, but 
um, you can have some, like if there's a lot of more, uh, you know, masculine planets like Sun and Mars and uh, Mercury, you know, Saturn, you're gonna get a more um, logical, rational expression of the Cancerian archetype even still. Um, what else? Psychic tendencies, definitely. It's a water, it's a water house. It's a water sign. It's not a house, it's a sign. Water sign. Um, so you're getting that that strong psychic occult uh, nature within cancer. Um, I, I often think of um, like witches in relation to cancer because of their the the nighttime influence, right? Um, you know, and this is just a this is just symbolic. Like I'm not. I mean, not that anyone with cancer placements would necessarily be a, a witch, right? But I, it's just generally that feeling because they have that that um, the magical occult quality to them. So you can get very like the psychic, the, you know, occultic kind of thing from cancer as well as the other water signs, especially Scorpio. Um, they are generally very good like nurses or caretakers right? Because they love caring for others. It's just very natural for them to love, to care for, to be around others in that caring capacity. They love their family, the home life, um, and they have a very strong connection to the past. And if you've ever been with a cancer or been around a wounded cancer or wounded a cancer yourself, they do not let go. They're very attached to the past. They're very sentimental, very attached to their memories. If you've hurt them, they are, I mean, very, not too dissimilar to a Scorpio. I'd say Pisces is a little different, but they're gonna, you know, they're gonna go after you. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna hold on to that and they're gonna be mad and they're gonna be mean. And, you know, they can be dangerous. Cancers can be dangerous, you know, crimes of passion. I, 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 I don't delve too much into this, but I know that like um, cancers will are known to commit, you know, heinous crimes because of, you know they're hurt or they hurt their family or something like that, right? They can they can go down down that path, that dark path. Cancer, a cancer can it's not above killing you if you hurt them. I'm not saying that a cancer will, but that archetype, right? Um, and again, because of their dependent nature, they, there's a tendency towards codependency, too much reliance on their partner or their family or just anyone in general. Um, emotional manipulation is big with cancer because they are so emotional and they can wield emotional power uh, over others, right? This is different than um, sort of like um, a, a Scorpio, you know, wielding psychological power. And there, there probably isn't a bit of, a bit of emotional manipulation in there uh with the scorpio but the real heavy emotional ma manipulation comes in with cancer right they just know how to to leverage um your emotions their emotions to get what they want you know from throwing fits to just to just manipulating your emotions um it's strong in cancer very much so uh they're very concerned with with safety uh, they want safety and security, sort of like a Taurus, but just more on the emotional level. But it comes through in the physical. They need the physical to feel emotionally secure, as well as emotional security. Um, and they want contained. They, they need their four walls around them. That's why um, the fourth house, cancer house, rules the, the home, right? They need that container. It's water. Water generally needs containers, right? Because it, otherwise it just falls all over the place. And at the same time, they want to feel protected, right? Um, so that's pretty much the basic archetype of cancer. Um, and I think it's important to think about, and we don't hear about this much, but just generally the, the four, the fourness quality, the, the ability to break down and resurrect. That's the death, the death, water, watery death quality that um, uh, is, is present with, with all water signs. All right. I'm going to share my screen because we're going to go over the um, ascendant. 
And the reason I'm lumping these together, people, you know, will separate them because um, the, looking at the Cancer Senate, it's just looking a lot deeper into the Cancerian nature. This is not just for Cancer Ascendants when we go through the houses. This really describes the Cancer nature in a much deeper, more fundamental level. Look at it this way. This is the chart of Cancer. If you want to understand Cancer, look at the Cancer with Cancer at the Ascendant. It's describing the whole nature of Cancer and same goes for every sign. So we've just described the basic nature of cancer. Uh, let's move on to the other houses. So Leo in the second house. Now this is where they shine. And um, the second house does relate to family. Some people think it's the fourth house. Fourth house rules home and early childhood development. But second house rules family. It rules assets, value, self-value, self-worth, knowledge. Um, and... Um, yeah, th those things that we're holding on to. And, and a cancer can shine in, in this area. Why? Because number one, family. Number two, assets. They want to protect their assets, right? They're very, that's really where they, they're, they're, a lot of their, their energy is, a lot of where their, their fundamental ego identity is. And that's what you can see with Leo sign. Uh, that's what they're really good at, protecting their assets, protecting their family, protecting what's theirs. That's very, a very Cancerian, uh, quality, whether you're talking about ascendant, sun, moon, you know, Mercury, Mars, Venus, Jupiter, any of the planets, that's, this is going to be prominent. Their, their, their need and ability and uh, identity, ego identity around the protecting, protecting what's theirs. Do not touch what is, what a cancer considers their, their property, whether it's their family, their money, their assets, their knowledge, they're going to be very uh, protective of that because they gain, that's where they gain a lot of their ego identity from. Um, Virgo in the third house. So here's the very intellectual side to cancer. Um, it's, it's doubling up on Mercury, Virgo, and, and the intellect, reading, writing, communication, expressing. So this is also saying that how, how um, you know, Mercury exalts in Virgo. So they're going to be very the way they speak is going to be very um, precise, uh, accurate, learned. They're going and they're, that's that's at least the the emphasis where they're going to strive for. They're going to be very careful or particular about their words, about their language, about their expression. Um, and they are they're they're very neat cancers when they speak. They're very neat. They're not one to be like wild and crazy with their expression. They're gonna be very um, well thought out in what they say. And they're gonna be very critical with their friends, their neighbors. Um, they're, you know, they're gonna have this uh, Virgo quality to, to all the third house things, right? Um, and this is a very good quality. If you'll notice that cancers, if you talk to them, they, they have this, they're, they're not like other signs. They're not going to be they're going to be very well uh, soft, not soft, well spoken. They're well spoken cancers. Um, their homes are going to be very beautiful, Venusian ruled, Venus ruled, um, nice, well decorated, decorated. Everything's balanced in their homes. Um, they're going to want nice, beautiful homes, right? Just pretty homes. They like their 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 pretty homes. Um, everything is 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 well placed and balanced. And here we have Scorpio in the fifth house. And do not mess with a cancer's children. I mean, even more than their assets, their belongings, their family. Again, yeah, their family, but like children, even, even more so. Like Scorpio is more deadly than, than Leo. We know that. Leo can fight, but Scorpio is where we get real, real venom, right? Venom. This is where the cancer becomes dangerous. You mess with their children, this is the house of children, right? Or their creativity, you know, whatever they consider their fun, their romance, um, you know, their games. Do not mess with, with their, their fifth house things, especially their children, right? Uh, that's when they'll become vicious. That's when they'll, be, they'll become nasty. And that's what they'll kill you for. Like, really, if, they, if you wound them romantically, or if you mess with their children, they will become nasty. They will become scorpionic. Um, and you will regret it. 
right? Uh, what else? Powerful, deep creativity, right? Because Scorpio is so potent, it's so fertile, right? Scorpio represents the, the fertility of the, the sexuality, sexual organs, right? So they're very sexual and romance. Um, their, their creativity is very potent and deep and transformative, right? Um, Sagittarius in the sixth house. So when it comes to fighting in enemies, they're going to want to trust the law. They are going to tend to use the law, take you to court rather than, um, you know, fight it on their own. Or if they do, they're going to be very philosophical and they're going to be very judicious and they're going to want to want to be fair and and Jupiterian, high minded. Right. These are not dirty fighters unless you mess with their kids. Right. Then they'll kill you. But if they're just in conflict, otherwise, they're going to want to go to the law or they're going to be want to be want to be very high minded and philosophical and um, rule bound. Right. Um, what else? Uh, in their daily routine, they can be very adventurous. Um, you know, they, they might want to travel for work. Um, they might want to work in law or philosophy um, or education, higher education. Um, yeah. And they're going to be very, you know, this is very good for, for enemies because Jupiter is very optimistic and, and jubilant and joyous and, and like benevolent. So they're going to have an easier time dealing with enemies just because of this. They just have a natural way of, of overcoming enemies. That's, it's very, uh, that's very good. Very benevolent. Capricorn in the seventh. Um, now here's where the, the idea of sort of dependency comes out because they need, they, they need leadership, right? They attract leadership. They attract Capricorn. They are Capricornian in their relationships, meaning they're very serious, very responsible, but they also attract Capricorn type, very masculine, very material, successful. Um, you know, the, the person who can go out, you know, the masculine type who can go out there and get a job, whether it's male or female, makes no difference. They're going to attract Capricornian types to them. And there's a certain, uh, you know, dependency on that. And not this, again, not necessarily codependency, but it could be, right? And, you know, the, one of the cancer's lessons is to, not, to, to learn how to be more dependent upon themselves. So I'm just gonna adjust my laptop here. Um, what else? Oh, Saturn ruled means that relationships are slow, slow to mature, slow to slow in the making. They're not going to just like, you know, jump in there and, you know, have a quick relationship and marry right away and all that. Uh, it's going to take time. It's going to take maturity. Um, everything Saturn takes time. Right. And um, yeah, they need mature long lasting relationship. That's what cancer wants. Um, so Aquarius in the eighth, this is actually very, very good for like research and deep scientific thinking or like uh, uh, astrology, the great, they can make great astrologers. Uh, Aquarius ruled by Saturn, but the modern ruler is Uranus. Uranus is the significator of astrology. Eighth house is the occult. So astrology, especially psychological astrology, is very much a part of the eighth house, right? Um, so, but just in general, the Aquarian knowledge, the air in the water house gives great understanding of the watery side of those things. Um, it doesn't do much for protection. Um, although Saturn, you know, Saturn... Saturn does do all right in the eighth house. Saturn gives long life in the eighth house and Saturn's a co-ruler of Aquarius. So yeah, I take it back. Um, it's not bad. It's not bad in the eighth house. It does offer some protection. Saturn does pretty well in the eighth house compared to you know, a lot of the other houses. Um, gives a long, like I said, protect, 
uh, creates longevity, um, can restrict, you know, Saturn can restrict learning and development, but because Uranus is also here, so Aquarius in general is mediocre. It's a fixed sign, so it's like not too, not very, not fast, not slow. Um, but in general, great understanding of eighth house matters. Um, it's very unique understanding. Um, rebellious um, in, in uh, secret matters, sexuality, very um, unusual sexuality, sexual, their, their sexuality can be very, very uh, out of the box, put it that way. Um, Pisces in the ninth house shows very high level spirituality, right? Ninth house is religion, philosophy, higher learning, higher education. It's also creative. They can study the arts here, um, go very high into the arts. Um, any any art, you know, could be like uh, any creative, any creative aspect uh, or spiritual, you know, um, philosophical type thing. Um, you know, Jupiter rules both Sagittarius and co-rules um, Pisces. So it's very natural here, this combination. Aries in the 10th. Uh, if you think Cancer is a pushover, think again. They can be highly, highly competitive when it comes to their career. The most competitive because that's what Aries is. Aries is the, ruled by Mars alone. And it's just, it's just you know, the, the single most focused and inspired sign of the whole zodiac. These are the fire starters. Can't, uh, sorry, Aries is the fire starter, as I always say. This um, can be incredibly inspiring position, incredibly inspirational, incredibly self-motivated or selfish, or incredibly devoted as well. Uh, leaders, natural leaders in the career world. Uh, so don't think cancer is a pushover. Um, Horace in the 11th, um, Venus ruled again. So, um, you know, arts, uh, creativity, sensory things, uh, food, they love their, their groups can be around their groups and networks can be around any of those things. They can be involved with Venusian groups. Um, very good for money here because 11th house is a money house career success, uh, they can be involved in um, food groups and um, beauty groups and things like that. And they can make a lot of money. And material, materialistic in their, in their, their social, social networking. Uh, Gemini in the 12th house is, is pretty unique. Um, this shows that that cancer is actually very lighthearted uh, when it comes to its its motivations in, in life. And cancer is the sign that can easily accept people because Gemini is in the 12th. So they don't have this, this kind of hindrance in their, their subconscious conscious because Gemini is so open-minded, right? It's really just it's really just about being curious and exploring exploring and everything like that. So uh, without, without this, with this, with this Gemini mutable error in the 12th sign, they're going to have this incredible way that they're just so accepting of people and they can like adopt kids, right? They can just like take outsiders in as their own because they don't have this, this subconscious blockage that's limiting their, their ability to love people and connect with people, right? It's not talking about partnerships. It's talking about just in general, Cancers can, can really be accepting. And that's one of those secrets to their open heartedness is Gemini in the 12th. Gemini in the 12th also, because the, the, the you know, intellectual brilliance of Gemini, they can really understand uh, things in a, um, in, on, a, on a subconscious level, on a psychic level. Um, so if like, if you have like, let's say Mercury and Gemini in the 12th, they're going to be they're going to be hearing things and they're going to have like a very powerful intuition and they're going to hear like um like answers from the void things like that because gemini is the planet of communication and when it's in the 12th 
they're going to be able to communicate with that subconscious. So they can be very creative here too. High creativity because Gemini is communicating, right? With the subconscious. So they have good access to their subconscious, you know, especially with Gemini in the 12th, but also with uh, Aquarius in the eighth and also Libra in the fourth, you know, the air signs are in the water houses. So their, their ability to understand watery things is very strong with, with cancer as it is with all water uh, signs. They have the air signs in the water houses and that's no mistake. I mean, that, that shows that the, the water, the air, the nature of the air signs is understand, I understand, right? I understand intellectually, I can intellectually grasp it. So they can intellectually grasp the nature of water, right? The watery nature, the water houses. So yeah, uh, first, you know, anything that's having to do with, with understanding that uh, secrets, hidden matters, occult, um, things like that, conspiracy, um, you know, being able to, to see people's hidden motives, hidden agenda, you know, seeing beneath the surface is very strong with, with cancer, but with, with all the water signs. They have that, that ability to see beneath the surface. And the thing, the other thing about water signs, which I forgot to mention, just basic nature of water, is that when you look at water, you see the surface. You might see the reflection or you might see waves and froth, but you're not going to easily be able to see beneath the surface. So one of the basic qualities of water is that you cannot see underneath. You can't see what they're hiding. And they're hiding a lot, right? Cancer and all water signs are very hidden. They're very secretive and you're not going to know what's really going on beneath the surface. And because of this, they can be deceptive. They can be dishonest, not saying that they lie. Lying is a choice. Just like when people say Gemini's lie, lying is a choice. It's, it's actually more of a, uh, it's just, there's a stronger ability to deceive in water signs than there is in air signs. Air signs are very transparent. Um, so deception is possible. So is manipulation. Uh, so is hiding and secrecy. Um, and all the watery associations, paranoia, uh, psychology, occult, paranormal, uh, spirit stuff, woo-woo, all that, all that stuff is, is very strong with cancer and, and the, all, all the water signs. But they have the ability, the, the cancers, even though you can't see beneath their surface, they can see beneath your surface, right? So it doesn't work both ways. Like they can see things that you can't see and you can't see what they can see. So yeah, um, that's basically what I've got for cancer and cancer ascendant. Um, so I'll be back soon with another video. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe and share if you enjoy this content. And if you want to book a reading, go to my website, macroastrology.com. And I will see you soon. All right. Thanks. Bye.